Thank you for joining Antelope Christian Center. We believe in the power of worship and the power of foundation of faith upon God's Word. Our vision and our ministry is built upon loving God and loving others. I want to speak to you today on the subject of breaking through. Break out, break through. I want to speak to you about a freedom that only comes from heaven. That word breakout is a very interesting phrase that we use. That word breakout or breaking through is often used in the entertainment industry. It has to do with somebody that they're trying to launch their career. They're trying to get a foothold of a fortune and fame and success. I was reading about a country western singer that has just taken America by storms. He's had so many best-selling albums, and he's a country boy from down south. Older on in life, he would make a record, an album. It would go crazy. But all the way, as he was growing up, he always loved music, and he wrote songs, and, and he never really considered the entertainment industry. He had different kinds of careers and jobs, and, and most of them you would call them blue-collar jobs. It was with his hands. And, and one day, an opportunity came his way, and somebody said, have you ever written a song? And he said, yeah. He said, well, go get me a song that you wrote. And he had this brown paper grocery bag, and back in the day, it was filled with cassette tapes. Let me give you a test. How many people know what a cassette tape is? Okay. So he had this filled with cassette tapes of songs that he's written, and the producer started listening to him. And the guy had enough songs for a few albums, and the first album, the producer called it a breakout album. It would go number one, and the name Alan Jackson would become a household name. He would instantly become a multimillionaire. That word, break out. But there's another sense of break out, and it's not about a Hollywood star or, or a Michael Jackson or an Elvis Presley or the Beatles having a breakout album. It's about you and I and the struggles that we face. And how our lives become like quicksand. And I know my life can become like quicksand in 24 hours, just like that. Something can happen, somebody can say something, they wound me, an event that I have absolutely no control over. It, it starts to control and influence me. And, and I liken those experiences to quicksand. Quicksand is when you get trapped in something and every time you struggle, you go deeper and deeper and deeper. Am I the only one that's ever experienced that? Where you have struggled with something, and the more you deal with it, the worse it becomes. The more you try to solve it, the more you try to fix it. I'm going to get better. I'm going to do better. I'm not going to let this get. I'm going to be happy. I'm got, I've got the joy of the Lord, and I've got the peace of the Lord, and I'm going to get through it. But why do I feel so stinking bad? Why do I feel like I'm sinking deeper and deeper? And you begin to cry out to God and you begin to pray. You say, God, break this bondage in my life. God, give me freedom. And what greater study about breaking the bondage in our lives than what's found in the book of Acts chapter 16. And with your Bibles open to Acts chapter 16, I want to study with you this morning the true story of two men named Paul and Silas. I want to study with you of bondage and how it controls our lives and how we can literally be set free of our suffering. Acts chapter 16, verse 16, reading from the New Living Translation of the Bible. One day, as we we're going down to the place of prayer. We met a demon-possessed servant girl. First of all, I want you to note the word we. We just kind of pops up here in Acts chapter 16. The book of Acts was written by Luke, who was a medical doctor. 
He wrote the Gospel of Luke and he wrote the book of Acts. You know he's the author because he tells us so in Luke chapter 1 and in Acts chapter 1, Luke. Now, Paul had been on his first missionary journey. This is his second On his first missionary journey, led by the Holy Spirit, he was anointed to go with Barnabas. On his second missionary journey, which begins in Acts 15 and 16, he is joined by Silas. And we were studying this and reading through it day by day. Paul and Silas pick up a young boy, man, named Timothy. Then somehow the author Luke winds up joining the team. And and this is just so fascinating because Luke never talks about himself, but all of a sudden he's not speaking about them, he's speaking about us. And when you see the word we in the book of Acts chapter 16, you recognize that Luke has now become a part of the story. Now, in this story, what was happening? They were on their way to a prayer meeting. They were going to pray when they are disrupted by that that is demonic. I find this so fascinating. In Acts chapter 3, Paul, excuse me, Peter and John were on the way to a prayer meeting when this great miracle happened. You remember the story? Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but that that I have give I unto thee in the name of Jesus rise up. And how many people remember that story? You do, don't you? Okay, they were on the way to a prayer meeting and a miracle happened. Now we come forward 20 years and it's Paul and Silas, Timothy and Luke, and they're on the way to a prayer meeting. Only instead of a sick person, they are being harassed by a demon. Now, here's something I don't want you to miss. The devil's work is to disrupt your prayer life. The devil wants you not to pray. God wants you to call upon his name. Every time you go to find a place of prayer, a time of prayer, a moment of prayer, the devil is on your heel and he's creating all kinds of disruption in your life. That's not happening because of heaven. That's happening because of the pit of hell. Disrupting you. In this story, the devil sends a demon to Peter, excuse me, Paul and Silas. That's right. The captain of the dark side sends one of his demonic people to harass Paul and Silas, disrupting their prayer time. And I want you to see this little girl. The Bible says that they met a demon-possessed servant girl. Now, there's some things that we recognize about this. She's not called a woman. She's called a girl. The difference of the use of the term girl and woman is age in the New Testament. When we prayed over boys and girls this morning, we were not praying over the women. We were praying over the girls. What's a girl? Someone younger than a woman. Can a young girl, as described here, be demon-possessed? Well, I'll let you argue. I'll just read what the Bible says. She is a girl, and she's demon-possessed. And she is harassing men of faith that are trying to pray. She is in bondage twice over. Note... She is a servant. She is owned by somebody else. She's called a slave. The one that has owned her is exploiting her. And in our world today, there are men that exploit women. There are men that exploit little children, both boys and girls. 
What we have here is the owner of a slave girl that is profiting off the darkness within her heart. She had become a fortune teller and she was making money, a lot of money, for the owners that controlled her. Verse 17. Every day she followed Paul and Silas, Timothy and Luke, all the rest of us. She was harassing these men of faith. She was shouting, these men are servants of the Most High. They have come to tell you how to be saved. She wasn't doing it as an evangelist. She was annoying them and distracting them and disrupting them. We're studying breaking free. We're studying what it means to break out. This went on day after day until finally one day Paul got fed up. He had enough. He was absolutely fed up. In the Message Bible, the word exasperated is literally paraphrased fed up. He had had enough of the disruption. We're going to see something here that is so insightful and carefully written for you and I to read 2,000 years later. The Bible says, frustrated, fed up, Paul got into action. Paul was motivated to do something. Note in your translation of the Bible, the Bible says that Paul, who was moving towards prayer, stopped what he was doing. He turned around... He turned around and note with me in your Bible not only what he said, but who he said it to. Note with me, he did not speak to the little girl. The little girl was in bondage. She was a slave, she was a servant, and she had become demon-possessed. And yet, Paul does not say a word to the girl, because he, he, he realized that the girl was nothing more than a shell and darkness like a puppet controlling her had stuck their hand up inside of her spirit. She was demon possessed and Paul spoke not to the girl but to the demon. Sometimes in your life, you get annoyed and you get frustrated. You get fed up. You get hurt. I went through an experience about a week ago, and I was very, very wounded. I was very, very hurt. And for three days, that immobilized me. I could not move forward. I was so held back by being bruised. That's what happens in your life, too. Something will happen. Every morning I would wake up ready to do what I've done for almost two years now, make a Christian video telling people that they knew, need hope. And yet I was feeling so discouraged I couldn't even make a daily devotional. I'm sharing with you what it is to get sunk in the sand. What it is to realize that the more you struggle and the first day you struggle, you say, I just can't do this anymore. God, I'm fed up. I can't do it. I've been doing this for a year and a half. I'm just tired of doing it, and this is what I get. I give up. And the second day I'm struggling with it, I, I, I sink deeper and deeper and become more and more discouraged. And the third day, you, you get so discouraged until one day you wake up and you have a breakthrough. Somebody say amen. amen. And part of your breakthrough is to understand where it's coming from. And it's not coming from the person. It's not coming from the person that said it. It's coming from the power of darkness behind that person. Somebody say amen. amen. Here's a person. Here's a little girl. Here's a little girl that's actually demon possessed. But he's not speaking to the little girl. He's not speaking to the girl that's been a slave. He's not speaking to the slave owner. He's speaking to the power of darkness behind that little girl. Do you remember Peter? Do you remember the day that Jesus turned to Peter and he said to Peter, he wasn't talking to Peter. Look at the words. He said, get behind me, Satan. He moved past Peter into the very source of the demon that was speaking and creating chaos and confusion even to others. 
How do you break through? How do you have a breakout? How do you break bondage? You realize that your problem is not with flesh and blood. Flesh and blood will wound you. Flesh and blood will hurt you. Flesh and blood will distract you. But it's not coming from flesh and blood. It's coming from the spirit and the darkness of almighty hell. And when Jesus turned to Peter, he said, I know who's behind this. And you better understand, because I don't believe that Christians can be demon-possessed. You better understand that Pastor Bill is telling you that Peter was not demon-possessed. You better understand that if you're a saint of God, worshiped in the blood of the Lamb, you cannot be demon-possessed. For Christ dwells within your life. Jesus looked beyond Peter, and he says, I know who's behind this. Get behind me, Satan. I woke up on the third day and I was reading through scriptures and I go, oh Lord, how can I be duped? How can I be deceived? The devil is so happy for three days. I haven't been doing devotions with other people. I haven't been moving forward. The devil wants to distract you. The devil wants to distort you. The devil wants to deceive you. He's a liar from the pit of hell. Amen. But there Paul was. And he looked at that young girl and he looked past her, and he says, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to release that girl. Look at what the Bible says. Look at what the Bible, we're talking about breaking bondage. This went on day after day, verse number 18. Paul got so fed up that he turned and said to the demon within her. I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I command you. You have power over death, hell, and the grave. You have power over the very demonic spirits that rule and, and fill this earth. In the name of Jesus. Do you remember the story found in Acts chapter 3? In the name of Jesus, I command you to rise up and walk. In the name of Jesus. I command you to let go of that little girl. And the Bible says instantly, at the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the darkness left her. Sometimes with the demonic, Jesus said, you will find that you will have to pray and fast. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. I can preach for two hours. I can preach in three hours. I can preach for four hours. But I'm, until I hear somebody respond, I'll just keep going and going and going and going and drilling and drilling and drilling until I get some oil. Amen. I am telling you that sometimes you have to pray and fast. Sometimes you have to come against the power of darkness and say, I can't just walk in there in my Sunday best and say in the name of Jesus, come out. And the apostles discovered that and asked Jesus himself, why couldn't we cast out demons like you? And Jesus said, sometimes you have to pray and fast. Sometimes when you come to the power of darkness, you need to put on the full armor of God and you need to take a stand in Christ's name. You come up and you say in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, come out. And nothing happens. <laughs> It doesn't happen. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. No, 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 no. If it doesn't work and you're the 49ers and it's the Super Bowl and you're behind, you don't go into the locker and say, we give up. You're the 49ers and it's the first quarter of the Super Bowl and you're two touchdowns behind. You're Tom Brady, and you're so far behind, it's never happened in history. And you got the broadcaster telling everybody, this has never happened before in history. Nobody has ever come back. Does anybody hear what I'm teaching today? You never give up. You never give up. You continue to pray. You begin to fast. You say, I'm going to fast three days. I'm going to fast seven days. I'm going to fast ten days. I'm going to fast until the hand of Almighty God begins to move. I'm going to fall on my knees and call out on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This woman, this girl, is completely delivered. You've never heard the name Bobby. 
Pastor Bobby passed away six months ago. Pastor Bobby grew up in a crazy family with crazy situations. I didn't know he had died. I was looking for him yesterday, and I discovered that he passed away six months ago, Pastor Bobby. I knew him when I was a professor at Trinity Life Bible College, and he had gone through Trinity School of the Bible, and he had become a pastor. But what's unique about Bobby is that he grew up in a very messed up family. When I was reading through the stories that were told upon his celebration of life, his memorial service, I read that when he was 13 years of age, his mom and dad put him in the car in Southern California and drove him to the inner city of L.A. At the age of 13, they dropped him off. They dropped him off at Skid Row. And they said to him, and I quote, this is where you belong. They left their 13-year-old son on Skid Row. Bobby would become a heroin addict. He would go in and out of prison so many times I couldn't really tell based on the story, more than a dozen. He would become a gang leader. He would have a source of revenue by selling drugs to young people. He would go to prison so many times. And then one time he was in prison and something happened. Somebody told him about Jesus. And Pastor Bobby Novak, who would become the pastor of Neighborhood Outreach Ministries Church, got saved and said yes to Christ. When he was released, he was sent to a halfway house here in Sacramento. When he was there, he continued to grow in the things of God. Instead of graduating, they promoted him, and one day he would become the director of the facility that he was doing his time at, a halfway house. Then God would stir his heart in the 1980s, and he would launch something called Neighborhood Church, Outreach Church. It was downtown. Today, L.A. Dream Center is in that same facility. I remember Pastor Bobby. We would minister on the streets. One of the things that God put in his heart were all these young people, all these boys and girls. And on Saturday, he would have a Sunday school program for the boys and girls. And many of them were either living in poverty or they were completely homeless in those days. Hundreds of kids came. 500, 600, 700 years, 700 kids would come. This was back in the 1980s and the 1990s. I mean, you do the math. That's like 30 years ago. Yesterday, Albert and I were out on the streets. Some of the people like Tyler calls me pastor. He said, you're the pastor to the homeless. And I guess I go three or four times a week. They know me. They see me coming. There's water. There's food. They see the God loves you trailer. We were out yesterday, and I was concerned that I would be able to go with Albert next week because of my personal schedule. So I called Albert out, and I said, you know what? I don't normally do this, but I go out all the time. Albert, you go with me. So Albert and I are out there, and I just barbecued 100 hot dogs early in the morning. Boy, I tell you, that's hard to do. Early, before sunrise, barbecuing 100. I, sh I, almost, I almost called you, Helen, and said, how do you do this? Because I knew she did it. Man, it was hard. So anyway, I had these 100 hot dogs, and the little tray was filled with water, and we're out there, and this young man comes up to us, and his feet are a mess, and he's homeless. His name is Jamie. Jamie, we are ministering to him. He, he's probably in his 40s now. We're talking to Jamie and say, Jamie, are you right with God? Are you serving Jesus? He rededicates his life to the Lord Jesus Christ, and then he begins to tell us, you know, the only thing that keeps me sane is I grew up. There was a guy by the name of Pastor Bobby who planted a seed of hope and faith within my heart. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. The word of the Lord will not return void. When you plant a seed somewhere, I mean, you got to check this out. you you got to get the whole background here. You see, Jamie was maybe 10 years of age some 30 years ago. And Pastor Bobby was ministering to 100 and 100 kids. Pastor Bobby probably wouldn't even recognize his name. But on top of that, Pastor Bobby went home to be with the Lord. 
I tell you, when I walked away from Jamie after praying with him, and I, I, in fact, I actually, it moved me so much, I, I posted a picture of Albert is washing the feet of a homeless man. And I'm, I'm like a hiker, so I keep a, a first aid kit for my feet in the back of my car. And Albert says, you got anything? I said, man, you're in luck. I'm the guy. So he takes his spray and he starts cleaning the guy's feet and helping him, you know, praying with him and talking to him. And then I look at Jamie after he told me about Bobby. I said, Bobby, can you, uh, I mean, I said, Jamie, would you like to say thank you to Pastor Bobby? He said, oh, that would mean so much to me. I said, well, let's do it right now. I said, I'm going to take my iPhone, I'm going to hold it up, and for 10 seconds, just tell Pastor Bobby, thank you. So he starts talking, and he starts thanking Pastor Bobby. And when I got home, I, I found out Pastor Bobby had passed away. And I, was, I wanted to send him this video. But then I found out Pastor Bobby had a son, and his son's name is David. And David, Pastor David, pastors in South Sacramento. So I wrote Pastor David a note. I said, your daddy, his name is still remembered on the streets of Sacramento. I said, Hopeless pe homeless people still remember. I think of you today. And one of the questions that I've heard people say, I don't know that my life really counts. I don't know if people, I'm really making a difference. Well, you know what? That's a really good question. Should you die today, will ever, anyone ever remember your name? Isn't that an interesting question? Should you die today, six months ago, six months later, would the flowers fade and your legacy disappear? People don't even remember that you were alive. You're just out of mind, out of body. You're just gone. But I was so touched when I realized Pastor Bobby is in heaven, and here Jamie is still telling the stories of how God used him. Oh, it's so amazing. I don't pass out a bottle of water. It's true, we've given out over 20,000 bottles. Now, if you do the math on your little iPhone right now, you'll recognize there's 20 to 40 bottles in a case of water. We've passed out in that little tra trailer somewhere between five and 800 cases of water. And I'm telling you, my back hurts. So much water. But just like I was trying to show Albert yesterday, Albert, we're not here to give out hot dogs. We're not here to give out water. We're here to give out hope to the homeless. I want you to see that bondage is broken by the power of the name of Jesus. Thank you for joining Antelope Christian Center. We believe in the power of worship and the power of foundation of faith upon God's Word. Our vision and our ministry is built upon loving God and loving others.